Hey y'all, I'm Connor. I wanted to do a breakdown of a simple scene to give you all an overview of terrain creation, texturing, and setting everything up for export. All right, so here, here's the base terrain. I started with a slump node. I played with the seed values a little bit in the scale, and I really like this variation. Um, I think with this valley and this hill and all that, we can make something really nice. So. I went with that. Um, I didn't really love this empty area over here, so I added a mountainside, brought it down a little bit, and combined those with max so that they both kind of poke through and we kind of get more of a valley shape. Um, if you want to bring that up a little bit, I just had the height remap. You can bring that up a little bit, play with it how you want. And yeah, so there's our base shape. Um, I wanted to break it up a little bit more, so I added a stratify node just to give some more variation. You can adjust the influence if you want. I have it turned down a little bit, and I turned down the spacing a little bit just so it's not too in your face. Um, but I think something like that just kind of gives a little bit more variation, kind of blends these two base terrains well. Um, so after that, I added an easy erosion and I was playing around with the seed a little bit and I was looking at soft soil too and I really like how not only does this create this really interesting kind of crater shape in the mountain but it also takes this stratified rock and really makes some nice layers which I really like so I just went with this um, yeah you can see also right here great sediment great rock breakup um, yeah, after that, I put a sandstone layer on it just because this section over here didn't look the most realistic. So yeah, you can see with the sandstone how that cliff shape kind of gets broken up a little bit and you get some more really nice variation in these cliffs right here. So I think that makes it look a little bit more natural and... I wanted to isolate this sandstone to adjust the peaks. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, I like to work in 1K just because when I'm doing the, the initial shaping and all that, I want it to update faster. When you get in the texturing and editing debris and, and foliage and stuff, I do like to go to the higher resolution just because it helps me kind of troubleshoot and fix any weird artifacts and bugs that that could pop up in the later stages it's kind of a lot so i went and added a blend node with the peaks as the factor and i turned the ratio down a little bit so we don't get as intense sandstone effect so there's before there's the after kind of breaks it up makes it look look a little bit more natural and then after that we're going to erode it again just to bring everything together a little bit more. Okay, after the erosion, we go to the rivers. You can play around with this a little bit. I wanted some water, especially in this lower area. Okay, so after that, that all gets fed into a choke point. So here we have the base mesh that we're gonna use. That's the final product. And if I fast forward over here, I brought this into a height map. So this is gonna be our exported height map. If I open this tab, you can see that I have this exporting as an EXR. So I prefer actually to use the mesher and have a mesh. Um, it's totally up to you and your workflow. Um, in a later video, I will probably go through in Blender and show how to set up a scene from these export maps. Um, but yeah, that'll be in a later video. Get back to the choke point. I wanted to add some, some foliage and some debris just to add to the realism a little bit, bring everything a little bit more together. So for the trees, I brought up the, the tree count way up. I brought the tree size way down and I switched the shape to big. You can see when I go to point, how it has a lot of smaller points. This is not gonna be as obvious when we're in the 1K preview. It's gonna make much more of a difference if we switch to the 4K. So give me a second when that's loaded in, I will come back. This is at 4K 
and you can see that when I switch back to point, everything just gets a little bit smaller. I just personally, I mean, I used to, and you can still do. Yeah, see, there's there's point. Let's switch back to big. I prefer this method, just making the trees big and just bumping up. You can also bump up the, the count all the way to a thousand. That'll help with the density. It doesn't seem like it takes much more computing power. I'm not sure. Um, but it's definitely not as much as, say, upping the density on the debris, which we'll get to that now. I have the amount turned down a little bit. We could bump it up just a little bit more just to get some more. I don't want things too large. Um, one important thing is that this debris is not going to be in the main landscape like I showed you right here. This is just for the scatter. So trees and debris will not be included in the main mesh, but I'm feeding both of these into their own masks. So here's the foliage. And you can use this to drive scatter systems or texture systems in Blender or whatever other software you use. There's the foliage and then there's the debris. So when I want to place rocks, I'm going to scatter them based on this mask. And I'm going to have individual adjustment in terms of color and all that that I don't get when I bake them into the original mesh. All right. I'm going to come back to these masks later, but I do want to show you starting the texturing process. Um, this is just a texture base layer. I played around with the seed a little bit, found something that I liked. This is very much going to be up to your reference or up to your preference. Um, feed that into a sap map and get something that looks pretty good. I like the rock color and I like the ground and there's some good variations. So I went with that just to break it up a little bit and make it look more natural. I fed it through a color erosion just to kind of, I don't know, we could bring this down just a little bit just to stop that breakup and kind of keep some of those color patches in here still. So I think that's good. After that, with the rock, I always like to feed it through a weathering node just to add some more detail. I think that breaks it up really nicely and adds some variation. I usually like to use a small scale for larger terrains. So when you turn it up very big, it just looks a little bit strange in my opinion. So yeah, I usually leave that pretty small. Yeah, I just turn like turn the dirt up a little bit. I kind of simulates like an ambient occlusion sort of look. I just think it adds to the overall realism. And then we're going to combine these. So we're combining this texture and this texture. I just use the tree output into the soil, plug that into a sap map, and then color eroded that. So kind of broke up a little bit of the pixelation you can see right there. So here we have both textures combined and I will show you the mask that I used and how to create that. Okay, a lot of times with these simulation nodes, I find that a lot of this data, this output data works really well for breaking up textures, you can always use these texture base or texturizer nodes or anything like that. But I find that with the simulation nodes, you get really good, unique detail. So I'm taking the where output and I'm feeding it into an adjust where I turn on the auto level. This is before you can see it faintly there, but the auto level brings everything up. So you get a zero to one mask. And because I don't want it on the whole terrain, I'm going to take the height. So this is the height data. I'm going to feed those both into a combine with subtract. We're just isolating that. And you can even see it here. If I pin this and adjust the height range, you can see how we're isolating how far up this greenery goes. So I think that's about what I want. So we're going to combine those. And then we're going to push it through a color erosion. And this is going to add a lot of nice detail. And also one quick note, all of these color erosion and weathering nodes do need a height input. Um, so I just took the choke point, this one right here, this is our final mesh data. And I plugged those all into here. And I just have these as portals just to clean up the nodes a little bit more and make it easier to explain. Okay, so once we have that, the color erosion, we can feed it back into here, and this is how we get the mask. So that's gonna 
decide where the green areas are. Okay, now that we have these two combined, I added some rivers. I want this to be a little bit more lush, so I'm gonna pin this so I can see. And then I'm gonna go down to the color erosion, and I think I might use the shaper to add a little bit more. So if I go back down here, you can see that when I move the shaper, it's just kind of pushing everything more toward the one direction or the white direction. So that's gonna push a little bit more of that greenery through. So now onto the rivers. I have this rivers node right here. I played around with it. Um, I brought down the down cutting just a little bit. And that is what's fed into the choke point. Once I have this, what I was talking about with the simulation nodes, I took the depth, plugged that into an adjust. And once again, I turned the auto level on. This, you can actually really not even see the rivers until you turn that auto level on. The data's there, but you just need to stretch that range in order to see it really well. So we're plugging that all the way into another combine with a sat map. I just made it blue. I'm just taking from the texture base right here because when we zoom in, there is good detail right there. So I brought the texture in and then I combined that using the water factor that we just made. I think that looks pretty good. So remember to save and I just plugged this output into the final color map. So these nodes are what we're gonna export. I have this right here. I have the height field. This is plugged straight into the choke point. This is gonna give us our open EXR 32-bit data. And I have the texture mask. So this is the mask that's breaking up these two textures. So if you wanna use the base color, you can. If you would like to use a rock texture and a separate grass texture, you can use the texture map to break that up in whatever software you're using. And then I showed you these. Here's the foliage mask. Here is the final debris mask. And then here's the mesher. So all of these, except for the mesher, are set to export. All you have to do, select them, mark for export, make sure they're named accordingly. And then once we go to the mesher, I have four levels of detail. In Blender, I have a geometry node set up where when I'm in the viewport, it'll use LOD4. And then for the final export, it'll switch to the base mesh so I can get maximum detail. OBJ with normalized scale and then adaptive topology works best for my workflow. You can play around with it. Um, but yeah, that's my recommendation. You can adjust the vertices per side. I have this up just enough so that it kind of maxes out what my computer is able to handle in Blender. You can play around with this just to see how your setup handles different different levels of detail, but you can always, I would always recommend setting it higher and then creating levels of detail so you can work down if your computer is not able to handle that. All right, so we are almost done with that. We're going to go to our build panel. You can get to that with this arrow right here. We're gonna set our build resolution. I'm using 8K and we have the nodes to export. I prefer to use all the masks in 8-bit PNG, just because it's just a black and white mask. Height field is going to be EXR. We want maximum data. And the albedo, I set to PNG 16, just because I want a little bit more flexibility um, over 8-bit if I do want to adjust the color or anything like that in the render engine. This is going to be where all your maps and masks are saved. And then for a basic build like this, that is pretty much it. We're going to go to the build. If you want to close guy and start build, that's going to be a little bit faster and we're just going to hit that and let it go. All right, that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, I will walk you through Blender, how to take all this exported data and put it into a scene that you can render out.